Welcome back to Andy Does Guitar. I am Andy and this is my guitar, but it has nothing to do with what we're talking about this week. I've always wanted to make my own guitar from beginning to end, and I actually started doing this about a month ago. I was actually making a video of me making this guitar and that footage will never see the light of day. Trust me, you don't want to see that footage. Basically, I screwed up everything. The way I look at it, aside from the material and all that stuff that you need to make a guitar, you really only need two things to make a guitar. You need the tools and you need the skill. And to an extent, these two things are interchangeable. If you don't have enough tools, but you have enough skill, you could probably make a pretty decent guitar. But if you don't really have the skill, but you've got an entire workshop worth of tools, you could probably make a guitar. I have neither of those which is why I wasted about $150 on wood. But that's beside the point. One thing that I do have is this, a 3D printer, the Prisha MK3S. I've seen a lot of people make 3D printed guitars and some of them are actually pretty cool. You can actually just go on Thingiverse and download them and print them yourselves. But what I've noticed is that a lot of these guitars are either Stratocaster copies or Les Paul copies or Strandberg copies, which is cool and all. But for me, if I want to make a Strat copy, I would just buy a Strat body or a Les Paul body. Hell, you can get kit guitars for about $120 and they're not half bad. So I wanted to sit down and design my own guitar and print it and then put it together and see if it actually turns out playable. All right, let's get started. So it seems like CAD is the go-to for people who want to design stuff to be 3D printed, but I like Blender a lot easier. It's a lot easier for me to be more creative in Blender. It's not quite 100% compatible with 3D printing. There are some things that you have to consider when setting up your Blender file. And whenever you export your STL, it's kind of up in the air for whatever reason that you're gonna get errors whenever you import it into a slicer program. Luckily, those are pretty easy to fix. So I've decided to do sort of a low poly look, something kind of in between a Stratocaster or an Ibanez and I've decided to put this F hole right here through it kind of my own take on the Ibanez gems grip and I've even made a custom low poly pickup selector and volume and tone knobs so I've found some filament on Amazon it's Sun Loose silk filament and it looks pretty cool it's gotten some pretty decent reviews and I think it's gonna look pretty cool with the guitar whenever it's done and this is sort of a rough idea of what the guitar is going to look like when it's done now because the guitar is so big and the 3d printer only has a printing area of like 200 by 200 by 200 millimeters it's something like that I have to break this up into pieces print them individually and then glue them together at the end so I split up all of my pieces I've got them all separated and this center piece right here is going to be the most important any other piece can just be kind of glued onto it but this has to be one solid piece because it's going to be holding the tension between the strings and the neck now all of these pieces I'm gonna save filament by only printing them at about 15 to 25 percent infill but this centerpiece is I think gonna have to be printed at 100% infill which means it's probably going to use an entire roll of filament just by itself so at the center of this guitar it's gonna be a two pound brick of plastic all right so I've got this piece right here in Prusa Slicer, which is going to be the only main piece that I'm going to print with the black filament that I got. So I'm gonna go ahead and knock this one out first. I needed to put a support blocker right here because of the bevel around the neck. It wants to put supports right there and I don't want those. And it's going to put supports all the way under here where the spring claw is gonna go. And I've got everything. I'm gonna print a brim and we got 100% infill. So let's slice it. See how long it takes. I don't want to look. I know it's going to be bad. I know it's going to be, I know. Mm. Oh, still calculating. That's bad. <laughs> when it takes this long to figure out how long it's going to print, you know it's going to be a long time. Is it still? Oh my God, it's still calculating? Oh. All right, so. We're gonna be here for a while.
finally, after nine days of printing, we have something that sort of resembles a guitar. We have all of the pieces individual right here. These pieces are pretty light because they were printed with between 15 to 25% infill for each piece, depending on which piece. For instance, this piece was printed with a little more infill just because there are a couple of places where you need to screw some things into it. The rest of these I think were done at about 15, but this bad boy right here, 100% infill. I went ahead and put my pit guard on there with the pickups that I'm using. You can see how well of a job I did designing it where all of these pickup wires are coming out in different places. I had to drill a couple of holes because my design wasn't perfect, but you live and you learn. This is solid piece of plastic. It's about two pounds. This was printed with 100% infill. I've heard some people say that you can go as low as like 50 or 35. I'm not sure if I trust that yet. I don't want it warping because with the neck right here and the bridge right here, this piece has to withstand about 250 pounds of pressure. This was the big one. This one took two and a half days to print. The rest of these pieces, not so long. I think the smallest piece right here took about maybe nine hours to print. And then the bigger piece right here, I think took about 17 hours. And now, if we assemble all of the pieces where they need to go, we should have something that resembles a guitar. Not bad. And so now all I've got to do is epoxy these together. And there you go. Nine days later, I have a 3D printed guitar, the Polycaster. I'm not sure if it's playable yet. I haven't had a chance to plug it in and yeah, I'm just messing with you. This is just a test that I made to make sure that I was dialing in all the settings right for the filament that I was using. And I decided to just print a little mini one. The actual guitar is right here. You know what? It actually ended up being a lot heftier than I was expecting. I mean, this thing probably weighs, it weighs almost as much as the Jim JR. Not quite, but it's actually pretty close. So that is the Polycaster, the 3D printed guitar project I've been working on for the past couple of weeks. Hope you thought it was interesting. I think it's pretty cool. If any of you guys are interested in making your own Polycaster, I went ahead and uploaded all of the files to Thingiverse so you can print them all yourself. You can just download the files off of Thingiverse. You can print all of the pieces if you want to change anything. If you think there's some modifications you can make better, have at it. And if you do decide to make your own Polycaster, let me know. I want to see what other people can manage to do with this. So as I say, that is that. Thank you so much for watching and be sure to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell and hopefully I'll have some other cool guitar videos coming your way. Have a good one.